Welcome everyone to this service of remembrance here at Knox Edging Court. My name is Bright, minister here at Knox United Church. We have gathered here with gratitude to recognize the sacrifices of our Canadian Armed Forces and RCMP members who have offered themselves in service to our country through world wars and regional conflicts at home and abroad. They have demonstrated courage, loyalty, integrity, and service to Canada before self. The freedoms we enjoy today would not be possible without them. And so, on this service, Sunday before the 11th day of the 11th month, we remember them. We also light the memorial candles today. We remember this church family, Knox United Church. May God's peace be with you all. Please join with me in the call to worship. From east and west, north and south, we gather on this day of remembrance to give thanks and praise. We come to be inspired by the word of God and honor the sacrifices of those who have committed themselves to service before self. In time of peace, in times of conflict and in times of uncertainty. We remember that we are not alone. We are the people of God connected across time and space from generation to generation. We are united by the love of the one who said, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. As we gather to remember, let us sing and pray. Let us worship God together. Oh 
join with me in the opening prayer. Let us pray. God of our past, present, and future, we have come to this place as a people of hope. We hope for a future without war and a world that lives together in peace. In years past and in the present day, members of our armed forces have put their lives at risk for this hope, with some paying the ultimate cost. May what we do here today strengthen our reserve to work together so that this hope may be fulfilled. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join our hearts and minds together and pray the Lord's Prayer in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us hear the assurance of God's grace. God is just and forgiving. God receives us as we are, lifts us up, and calls us again to be people upholding justice and peace. Receive God's pardon and peace, knowing that all sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Sing your praise to God eternal, sing your praise to God the Son, sing your praise to God the Spirit, living and forever one. God has made us, God has blessed us, God has called us to be true. God rules over all creation, daily Miss Jane here. So glad that you've joined us for our moment of discovery time on this very special Remembrance Day Sunday. This morning I thought we'd maybe just spend a moment or two looking at the history of the poppy, why it is such a significant symbol. And we're actually going to then use the poppy, maybe the one you're wearing or if you have an extra one, and we're going to do a little bit of reflection, a little reflection prayer using the poppy. So here we go. Did you know 
of course, that each November, poppies bloom on the lapels and collars of millions of Canadians. The significance of the poppy can be traced back to the 19th century, over 110 years before being adopted in Canada. Records from that time indicate how thick poppies grew over the graves of soldiers in the areas of Flanders in France. Fields that had been barren before battle exploded with the blood red flowers after the fighting ended. During the tremendous bombardments of the war, the chalk soils became rich in lime from rubble, allowing the poppies to thrive. When the war ended, the lime was quickly absorbed and the poppies began to disappear again. Interesting, isn't it? The person, of course, who first introduced the poppy to Canada and the Commonwealth was the Lieutenant Colonel John McRae of Guelph, Ontario, a Canadian medical officer during the First World War. John McRae penned the poem in Flanders Fields on a scrap piece of paper in May 1915 on the day following the death of a fellow soldier. Little did he know that those 13 lines would become so significant and become enshrined in the hearts and minds of all who wear them. McRae's poem was published in a magazine in December of that same year in 1915. The idea of the Remembrance Poppy was conceived by Madame Anna Guerin of France. She was inspired by John McRae's poem in Flanders Fields, and Anna had originally founded a charity to help rebuild regions of France torn apart by the First World War and created poppies made of fabric to raise funds. Later, Anna presented her concept to France's allies, including the Royal Canadian Legion and the Great War Veterans Association. And the idea was considered at a meeting in Port Arthur, Ontario, now Thunder Bay, and was adopted officially on July 6, 1921. Today, the poppy is worn each year during the remembrance period to honor Canada's fallen, all soldiers. The Legion also encourages the wearing of a poppy for the funeral of a veteran and for any commemorative event honoring fallen veterans. It is not inappropriate to wear a poppy during other times to commemorate fallen veterans. It is of course an individual choice to do so as long as we do it appropriately. Well, thanks to the millions of Canadians who wear the Legion's poppy each November, the little red flower has never died and the memories of those who fell in battle remain strong. Wouldn't Colonel John McRae just be amazed? Well, my friends, look at your poppy that you're wearing, or maybe you have an extra one with you. Poppies are bright red, aren't they? Beautiful, actually. Real poppies are stunning. Let's give thanks to God for the lives of those who have died in war but remembering all the joy that they brought to their families and friends and all the good things they did, even with their short lives and how thankful we are for their sacrifice. Now look especially at the red petals. Feel, feel your poppy, hold on to it. Red, it does remind us of danger and harm. Let's ask God to be close to those who are still facing danger each day, to give courage to the armed forces and compassion to all who help others. Place your whole hand over the poppy. Poppies are also very fragile and need to be handled gently. God cares for those who are hurting, those who are sad. Let's ask God to comfort all who are grieving the loss of someone they love. Finally, place your finger on the center of the poppy. Let's ask God to help us play our part in working for peace in the world. Dear God, we thank you so much for the symbol of the poppy. And we thank you for the lives of the many men and women 
that were sacrificed so that we can live freely. Thank you, God, and we will remember them. Thank you, God, for Jesus and his love and his sacrifice. Thank you, God, for the life that we have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the rest of the service have some meaning and maybe some sentiment for you. My young friends out there, it's important to hear the stories. It's important for us to always remember. God bless. Today's scripture reading is from 1 King, chapter 17, verses 8 to 16. 耶和华的话临到他说他去取水的时候以利亚对他说妇人就照以利亚的话去行他和他的家人并以利亚吃了许多的日子当那的面我不减少平里的油也不缺短正如耶和华借以利亚所说的 Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church Thanks be to God. I heard about this man dressed in blue jeans, cowboy boots, cowboy hat. He came to this real fancy church one day. Many were appalled and they expressed their concern to their minister. The minister got him aside and told him, you better ask God how to dress before you come to this church. Next Sunday, he showed up again, dressed exactly the same. Must be attending United Church before. The minister scolded him, I told you to ask God how to dress before you come here. The man said, I did ask God, but God said he didn't know because he's never been here before. Here at Knox, there is no such thing as dress code. All are welcome here. A lot of people today, when somebody is in their difficult time, instead of sticking up for them, they look down on them. I'll be with you in the good time, but in the tough times, good luck, you're on your own. Today, more than ever, we should stay committed to each other, especially for our family members, community members, and for these extended church family members. We may disagree occasionally, and I know no people are really compatible, but we have to learn to become one, making sacrifices, overlooking things, Instead of trying to force our opinion, which can cause tension, 
in our homes, in our relationships. We can choose to go with flow. Understanding there's no such thing as a perfect spouse, a perfect neighbor, perfect teacher, a perfect minister, although I'm quite close to that. In the Old Testament, the prophet Elijah, he was hiding himself by the place called Kirith Brook. Later on, the name is used as Jordan River, where Jesus began the public ministry. Many were coming against the prophet Elijah. God sent ravens to feed him physically, but it's, the scripture says the water, the brook, dried up. Now, Elijah had to move to a different city called Jerapath. It is a city where, it is the city that the enemy's hometown. One bad break after another. Elijah, for sure, he was in a difficult time. But God said, I have commanded you a lady who's going to take care of you in that city. Elijah finally got the message from God. God was saying, I will stick with you through thick and thin. In a good time and in your bad time, I will be with you. Now, Elijah is at this woman's mercy, according to the story. But she only had a little. Elijah asked the food and she attested, I don't have any bread, you're asking. I only have a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. That's all I have. And she went on to say, I'm gathering a few sticks to make the last meal for me and for my son. And she says, after we eat this food, then we may die. What do you do when you have little? What do you do when you can't see any sign of what you are believing for? Any sign of improvement? What do you do when you have little? You're working hard, but the doors are not opening. You're praying, but the financial situation is not getting any improved. You're doing the right thing, but the relationship isn't getting any better. You only have a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug, so to speak. If we saw a little improvement just here and there, or if we just felt a little better, at least we would know, we would think that what I am doing, what you're doing was helping. But the point, one of the points the story here is making is that before any promises of God comes to pass, we go through a season of silence. We go through a season of dark time, disappointment difficult time. Now, in that difficult time, Elijah was hiding himself. The woman had so little. God was using that difficult time, my point is. We wonder, is what I am doing is even working? Is my believing, my praying even making any difference? But just because we don't see anything improving. Just because we don't see anything happening doesn't mean God is not working. Much of God's work is done in secret. The woman cannot see what's happening behind the scene. Elijah couldn't understand why he's going through what he's going through. Are you in a season of silence? Are you in a season of disappointment, difficult time? Or do you know anybody who is in a difficult time? My challenge is, can you go sticking up for him or her? God, I may not see anything happening, followed by, but I'm not moved by what I see. I am moved by what I know, and I know you promised good, and what you promised is on the way. 
Little did she know the widow, her son was going to become ill, and the little child is gonna grow worse and worse, and finally, the little son stopped breathing. In verse 17, it says, the scripture says, Don't get weary in well doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. But in reality, it's easy to get down when we are doing the best we can, but we continue to experience disappointment and difficult times. It's never going to work out. My business is never going to work out. The relationship broken is never going to get restored. What am I going to do? Have you ever gone through a season of silence? Have you ever experienced disappointment in your life? What do you do when you have little? If you read the scripture today, you may wonder why Elijah was hiding himself. He didn't do anything wrong in God's eyes. You may wonder why this woman has to share the little she had and she has to see her son dying. So little they had to share. Both are in difficult time, but they are the very source. Do you know God was using to do what God is up to? At the beginning of chapter 17, we only see the prophet Elijah so suddenly in a difficult time. There's no indication about what's going to happen to the woman either and to her little child who was dying. Some things have to develop in the dark time, in secret. If the story began like God is going to heal the sick at the beginning, if God showed us what God was up to at the beginning, which didn't happen, then, then it wouldn't be as difficult to believe. But that will not take any faith. When there, where there is no sign on the outside, we have to believe that what's on the inside is still alive. The faith, the promise of God is still alive. Even if we don't see any growth, even if we don't see any move, even if we don't see any signs of improvement, yet there is something in our faith DNA where we can believe when every circumstance tells it's not going to happen, God is still sticking up for us. We can be disappointed, but don't have to get discouraged. When everything we see is a handful of flour and a little oil in a jug, we are in a difficult time. We only have a handful of flour and a little oil in a jar. That means God is working behind the scene. As much as we don't like it, bad break, the betrayal, disappointment, God is not only ordering our steps, God is also ordering the steps of those who we need to fulfill our destiny. We know God ordered Jesus' steps. We also know God was ordering Judas' steps. We know God was using David's step. God was also using Goliath's steps. Without a handful of flour and little oil, Elijah wouldn't have made it. Without that little, the widow would not experience the miracle of her son coming back to life. When we feel like we are doing little, we never know what God is doing behind the curtain. When things run out in our life, so to speak, instead of complaining, being bitter, keep the right perspective. It had to run out so that we can see the best yet coming. So, 
you and I can step up to who we are created to be. Don't underestimate the power of little we have. When soldiers go to war, they know the risk of not coming back home alive. So what drives a, a man or woman to take such risks? I've never heard of a big thing, big dream when they go to the war. Never heard of anyone saying, I'm going to fight for the prime minister. I'm going to fight for the people provinces away. No, it's usually more closely connected to home. Many reasons for deciding to enlist, but one main reason is always, it always had to do with home and children. They fight for the children's freedom, or they think of children who do not have the joys of their own, so they want to make a difference. Heard about this story. This Belgian stone, stone carver was making a huge monument for fallen Canadian soldiers because their remembrance is still relevant to their peace today. He says it's important to continue this story for our children. Out of many soldiers buried there, include is one of the last Commonwealth soldier to die to the end of the war. His name is George Lawrence Price. The last Canadian soldier during the First World War killed in November 11, 1918, just two minutes before the hostility ends. He was once charged with theft of goods at home here in Nova Scotia. He sent cars while he was in the service to his sister Florence. I still think of you and I still miss you. His nephew remembers him as, as a good uncle. I'm very proud of him. I know he didn't want to be there. He didn't want to shoot anybody. He led a patrol, but got shot by a German, German sniper just two minutes before the 11 a.m. We feel like we are using or we are having, we only have a little. We feel like we're going through a disappointment. But they are the very source God sometimes uses. Hundred years passed, yet the Belgian stone carver built a monument for George and many Canadian soldiers. They have a plaque, bridge, school named after George. So today, are you feeling like do you feel like you are going through a disappointment? Do you feel like you only have a little, like a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug, so to speak? Remember the disappointment, the very little we have. God sometimes uses them and work what God is up to behind the scene, behind the curtain. And the message is, God is saying, I will be with you. I will stick with you through thick and thin. Amen.
In Flanders fields, in Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh.
Now let us take this time to honor those who have dedicated their lives to serve our nation for the sake of peace. Eternal rest grant unto them, O God, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May the souls of the righteous, through your great mercy, rest in peace. Amen. now pray for our offerings. Faithful God, you ask us to be faithful people. In this community, you ask us to be people of justice. In this community, you ask us to be people of mercy. In this community, you ask us to be people of peace. Be with us as we try to be faithful. In large ways, and in small ways, so your eternal community may come in every way. Amen. I invite all of you to join with me in the prayers of the people. We are grateful at heart that there was reconciliation amongst the nations of Europe. And for the work of reconciliation where its fruits are realized for many countries around the world. We are grateful for the inheritance of peace and justice that is ours. And that it is in our hands to pass it on. We pray for those for whom this is a time of pain and loss. For those for whom painful memories become fresh, for those far from loved ones, and for the loved ones who wait for them. We pray for those people who are in the many places in the world that are far from peaceful, who hear the sound of approaching war planes, to whom the shock of the bombs comes without warning whose necessary activities are interrupted by gunfire and shelling, and whose children it is unsafe to continue their education. Lord Jesus, within those within whose experience it was to share in the daily life of human community, 
strengthen those for whom every day things are struggle, for whom feeding their children does not come easily, for whom finding work seems like a lost cause, for whom having a secure roof over their heads would be a dream come true. Almighty God, we also offer, offer prayers for those voices that have been silenced. We ask for your spirit of reconciliation to be near. We pray that there may be an end to bullying in schools, harassment in homes, workplaces, discriminatory laws and practices. May we learn the call to be bearers of peace and spread this vision through love and solidarity. In silence now, we offer concerns and prayers of our hearts, knowing you are always there to listen, even when we may not have the words. God of love, God of peace, create within me a heart for people, a desire for change, and for new beginnings to start this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, sometimes God uses the very disappointment we are going through. God sometimes uses the very little thing we have to show what God is up to. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.